day grade 11s welcome to this final lesson on magnetic fields and Faraday's law. In this lesson we're going to consolidate everything and we're just going to be looking again at induced EMF. Let us join the Mindset Learn team as we do this. Welcome to this series on electromagnetism. Today we will summarize the concepts that we looked at in this series and then we will do a few examples of the applications of Faraday's law of induction. We started by learning that electromagnetism is the study of the properties and relationship between electric current and magnetism. Then we investigated that a current carrying conductor produces a magnetic field around the conductor. The direction of this magnetic field is found by using the right-hand rule. This magnetic field is the principle on which electromagnets work. Electromagnets are temporary magnets formed by current carrying conductors. The strength of the magnetic field in and around a solenoid depends on the number of turns, the strength of the current, and the type of metal of the core in the solenoid. We looked at electricity that produced magnetic fields. We then investigated the reverse of this, where magnetic fields produced electricity. Electromagnetic induction occurs when a changing magnetic field induces an EMF and a current in a conductor. The induced current depends on the speed of the movement of the magnet relative to the conductor, the magnetic flux density, and the number of turns in the solenoid. The induced current flows in such a direction that its magnetic field opposes the changing magnetic field that induced it. The right-hand solenoid rule can be used to determine this induced current direction. Then we looked at the magnetic flux through a surface. Magnetic flux is the product of the component of the magnetic field normal to the surface and the surface area. Magnetic flux, phi, is equal to the product of the magnetic field B and the area A cos theta where theta is the angle between B and the normal to the surface. Remember that magnetic flux is measured in Weber, magnetic field strength is measured in Tesla and the area is in square meters. Once we had covered magnetic flux we were able to understand Faraday's law. This says that when a magnetic field moves relative to a conductor, an EMF is induced in the conductor. In other words, the induced EMF in the conductor is directly proportional to the rate of change of the magnetic flux. The magnitude of the induced EMF is given by Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. The induced EMF depends on the rate of change of the magnetic flux and the number of turns on the solenoid. Let's look at two examples where we apply this knowledge. Please have a paper, a pen, and a calculator with you if possible so that you can do the calculation with us. A square wire coil with sides of 180 millimeters consists of 200 windings. There is a magnetic field through the coil, perpendicular to the coil. This magnetic field changes from zero Tesla to 0, 0,8 Tesla in 0, 0,5 seconds. Calculate the magnitude of the induced EMF in the coil. We have to calculate the magnitude of the induced EMF in the coil. Can you think where to start with this one? First, we draw a picture of the situation. Then we calculate the change in the magnetic flux. And then we can answer the question. The square with sides of 180 millimeters must be converted to 0, 0,18 meters. The magnetic field is perpendicular to this area. The formula for the area of a square is length times breadth. So, 0, 0,18 meters multiplied by 0, 0,18 meters is equal to an area of 0, 0,0324 square meters. Do not round this value off because it is not the final answer. Now we calculate the change in the magnetic flux. We calculate the final magnetic flux 
minus the initial magnetic flux. Remember the magnetic flux is the magnetic field strength multiplied by the area. Let's substitute. The final magnetic field strength is 0, 0,8 multiplied by the area of 0, 0,0324 square meters minus 0 since the initial magnetic field is 0. The answer is 0, 0,0259 to Weber. Again, this is not the final answer, so we will not round off. Now we calculate the magnitude of the induced EMF. We can leave the negative out of the equation because that determines direction and we will only ask for magnitude or size. We substitute all the values into the equation. We find that the answer is 10,368. This, our final answer, so we we'll round it off to 10,37 volts. There is time for one more example. We are going to answer two questions here. A square loop of wire with size of length 2 meters is perpendicular to a magnetic field with strength of 10 Tesla. The square is rotated by 60 degrees in the course of 4 seconds. What is the induced EMF in the square and in what direction does the current flow? Here are the diagrams showing what is happening. Our working order will be 1. Calculate the area. 2. Calculate the changing magnetic flux. 3. Calculate the magnitude of the induced EMF and determine the direction of the induced current. The area of a square is determined with the formula length times breadth. Substitute 2 meters times 2 meters. The area is 4 square meters. Let's calculate the flux through the square before it's rotated. Because it's perpendicular to the magnetic field, the flux is simply the product of the area of the square and the magnetic field strength. Substituting the values gives us an initial magnetic flux of 40 Weber. Next, let's calculate the flux through the square after it's rotated. Now we have to take into account the fact that the square is at an angle of 60 degrees. Substitute the values and calculate. This gives us a final magnetic flux of 20 Weber. So the change in magnetic flux is the final magnetic flux minus the initial flux. The difference is negative 20 Weber. The magnetic flux decreases because, as the square is rotated, fewer magnetic field lines cut through it. Now for the induced EMF. Write down Faraday's formula to calculate the EMF. There is only one turn in the square loop, so n has a value of 1. We calculated that the change in magnetic flux is negative 20, and the time in which the rotation took place was 4 seconds. That gives us 20 divided by 4, which equals 5. The unit for EMF is volts, so the induced EMF is 5 volts. To determine the direction of the current, we first need to determine the direction of the change in magnetic flux. From the diagram, we see that the magnetic field lines, B, move in the upward direction. Because we rotated the square so that it is no longer perpendicular to the field lines, we decrease the magnetic flux. Since the magnetic flux changed by negative 20 Weber, this is equivalent to flux change of 20 Weber in the downward direction. The direction of the current must be such that it opposes the downward change in flux. In other words, the current must have an upward direction. Point the thumb of your right hand upward and curl your fingers. As you look down on them, they curl in an anti-clockwise direction. This is the direction of the current flow. So the induced EMF is 5 volts and the induced current is in an anti-clockwise direction in the square. Wow, grade 11s, I think that was a very, very good lesson. Um, I'm glad that they went through a couple of examples with you. Please make sure that you can do those examples. Go back, 
make sure that you can understand the questions, do the questions by yourself and then check the answers and then practice using the assessments in the Turnable system. Have a great day.